Hello students. Today I will demonstrate a practical of your coursework pharmacology one fourth semester subject and the aim of your practical is to study the effect of drugs on the ciliary motility of frog esophagus. Okay. So myself Dr. Gavin Prissing I will be demonstrating the basics of this uh, uh, experiment which is very simple but yet very understanding and very enlightening experiment. Okay. So students I start this experiment by clicking on the tutorial and uh, this is the uh, Farm X Pro software where I will demonstrate and explain the basics of this uh, as well as the methodology experimentation and basics of this practical. So students when we talk about the ciliary processes uh, we must know that where what is what is the location of these ciliary uh, processes. The ciliary processes are a type of thread thread like processes which are present on the surface or the epithelial surface or internal lining of several organs where their function is very much required. For example, when I talk about the esophagus, esophagus we all know that esophagus is responsible or required for propulsion of food or food particles into the GIT cavity and GIT cavity. So of course these ciliary processes are required there. Ciliary processes are required there. Okay. So when we talk about the next organ where these ciliary processes we can find that is the intestinal epithelium layer. So epithelial layer similarly plays a very vital role in absorption of nutrients in that uh, particular um, part we, we call these uh, ciliary processes as the villi which are also responsible for absorption of nutrients as well as the uh, deciding the motility or movement of food through the GIT cavity. Okay. So and another organ where we can find a uh, or we can get an example of these ciliary processes is the urinary bladder. Of course, the internal epithelial lining of urinary bladder also possesses these cilia, these cilia which are thread like processes which help in the movement of urine through the urinary uh, cavity or the, ure or the ureter or the ureter as well as the urethra. So from the present experiment right now what we are uh, studying, uh, we will study the effect of various drugs. Uh, uh, we sp specifically talk about the cholinergic agonistic drugs like acetylcholine, physostigmine and the cholinergic antagonist atropine effects on the ciliary motility using the frog esophagus muscle preparation. Okay. So when we start this experiment, the main requirement of this experiment is a frog. Second is the drugs, acetylcholine, then is physostigmine, then is the muscarinic antagonist, atropin. Okay. Then we also require a surgical dashboard. We also require frog ringer solution. Okay. So these are the basic requirements for understanding this practical. Okay. So the procedure. First of all, the frog is taken. And if we carefully analyze the front side of the anterior side, I would say the front or anterior side of the uh, head of the frog, we can see a slight dip in the skin or the dorsal surface that is the topical surface of the uh, front head. And that, that dip is uh, a little bit cushionous, has a little bit cushion or a little bit depression. It has a, a sort of a fluid. And that is the location uh, from where we can insert a needle like uh, a needle or like uh, object from this uh, particular point 
and after insertion in this needle like point uh, needle like uh, in this area the needle gets inside the space between spinal cord which is coming from the mid brain or the upper brain so once the needle reaches there then we carefully rotate or little bit extend the needle so that the spinal cord gets break or gets dislocated from the uh, remaining mid brain or the upper higher center or central nervous system okay once this step is done the successful completion of this step could be uh, analyzed or could be determined by the disc by the absence of any movement in the frog peripheral organs like in the uh, limbs four limbs or any um, other skeletal muscle tissue so when any movement is absent after this procedure which clearly shows that the dislocation has been successful now carefully make a incision in the upper abdominal area remove the skin of the frog gently then using the sharp scissor and blood forceps carefully make a incision or deep cut and and separate the muscular layer up uh, once we cross the muscular layer we can easily see the trachea and when we go downwards towards the stomach area we can see the esophagus carefully carefully dissect the esophagus portion uh, by cutting from the upper and lower end and then another again carefully cut the or cut open the esophagus from the central point once the esophagus is open then once the esophagus is open then what we see is a smooth muscular in inner muscular layer of the esophagus lining and in this lining uh, once this lining is uh, shown or visible we what we do we tie up or we uh, place the pins on the all the four outer different corners of this muscular layer using a, on a dissection board or surgical board once the once the uh, esophagus is cut open and carefully located on its position using the uh, pins we do um, in the second step what we do is we suspend or pour very tiny seed like particles which are colored in shape as we can see in the present diagram next to the next figure to the frog sections from uh, the first and the second figure to the frog where the esophagus is open we can see tiny uh, we can see tiny colored uh, deep yellow colored uh, particles or seeds which are placed on the surface of esophageal lining okay so we cannot see cilia by naked eye because these are very small in size we use micro we require microscope for this purpose but we can still observe their movement how now i will tell in the second step as we learned we pour seeds now we have as i already discussed we have certain uh, different uh, drugs first one is the uh, different uh, uh, treatments first one is the ringer solution of course ringer ringer solution is only salts that will not produce or um, produce any effect on the motility of the ciliary uh, processes then in the present diagram we see that there is another drug acetylcholine next is physosigmine both of these are cholinergic agonist then is the atropine that is cholinergic antagonist now students if you carefully recall when we have studied the autonomic nervous system what we uh, learned is that the cholinergic drugs or the acetylcholine like cholinomimetics or cholinergic agonists or anti cholinesterase agents they increase the uh, git motility gastrointestinal tract motility in the they increase the gastrointestinal tract motility in, uh, in the uh, uh, in the git and they increase the propulsive movement of the food okay so once the uh, once the propulsive movement of the food is increasing we know that how this is happening this process requires muscarinic receptors and which one 
we talk about of course the muscarinic receptors like m3 receptors m1 receptors are present on salivary glands and other organs other organs and uh, the musk and the uh, are present on the salivary gland or mus other organs whereas the uh, uh, on the uh, m3 receptors are present on the intestinal as well as the uh, esophageal smooth muscle lining and when these muscles are stimulated or activated they increase the muscular movement they also increase the ciliary muscle processes movement they move in forth and back and forth like direction like this and when they move when they move uh, the seeds present on their surface on the topical surface of the um, of the uh, tissue of the or of the esophageal internal tissue they also move along with it okay so m3 receptor stimulation uh, results in the movement of the seeds across the uh, esophageal lining and now let us uh, first for the let us first for the uh, ringer solution we we already know that when we pour ringer solution let us do this uh, here uh, when we try to uh, i have selected ringer solution here okay and now i try to instill the uh, drug as we can see this uh, dropper has uh, been there on the on the square box uh, which is being shown by the cursor and uh, by the arrow on the screen and we can see there is no movement there should not be any movement okay then in the another experiment uh, in the another experiment we we select the new tab and after that what we do is select the acetylcholine drug which is a cholinergic agonist and we expect that uh, this cholinergic agonist by stimulating the m3 receptor will in increase the enhance the motility of ciliary processes and due to which the seeds present on the surface of duodenum they will move downward and and the time required by these seeds to move from the topmost portion to the bottom that is recorded as the ciliary motility movement okay the ciliary muscle movement is ciliary bodies movement okay now when we instill this drug we expect we cannot see right now but this is just a, a demonstration um, uh, so we expect that the seeds over a period of time will accumulate at the bottom or the lower most part of the esophagus and this is how uh, we analyze the ciliary uh, processes movement which is being stimulated by the cholinergic agonist in the similar manner the another agent physostigmine will also stimulate m3 receptor and then increase the ciliary motility or ciliary process movement due to which if the seeds are placed on the upper most part this remember this muscle which is muscular layer which is there it is already flattened or and in a horizontal position not in a vertical position so any movement if it is possible for the seeds that is only by the ciliary processes now similar manner physostigmine will act okay and it will increase the ciliary movement and we record it for suppose let us say for 5 or 10 minutes but time has to be fixed for all the drugs and we record on the table next we wash the uh, tissue with the ringer solution every time uh, every drug is uh, checked or tested in the last step uh, we again place the in the last experiment we again place the seeds on the top of surface on the upper part and again then instill the uh, or we uh, pour the or place the uh, cholinergic antagonist atropine and we note the movement if any there if any movement uh, around uh, for a period of 5 to 10 minutes and whether whether these seeds have gone down so what we expect atropine being a m3 receptor or cholinergic antagonist would reduce the movement of the seeds from the uppermost portion to the downmost portion and due to which it will uh, inhibit the uh, ciliary process movement so through this simple experiment what we have learned the effect of cholinergic drugs on the intestinal motility specifically the ciliary process movement which are present on the lining of the git tissues or in this particular case the esophagus tissue uh, and then we also learned or discussed about the effect of cholinergic antagonist atropine on the ciliary processes movement which is going to be reduced after atropine treatment so every time 
the every experiment before we start wash it with the ringer solution so what we get uh, at the end of experiment now when we click on the table on this uh, particular screen as i am clicking this is just an example do not take it as a, a full or final reading or fixed reading when we pour ringer solution we expect readings or we expect uh, that ciliary motility should not be affected there should not be any movement of seeds which has to be there these are just a readings to get you an idea okay but in this second uh, experiment after washing with the ringer uh, when we pour the acetylcholine we would expect that the time taken for the seeds to uh, go down or from one point uh, of the esophageal preparation esophageal muscle preparation to the other end of the esophageal muscle prep preparation will reduce and why because acetylcholine increases the movement of the ciliary processes due to which the uh, due to which the uh, our um, uh, seeds which are being poured or placed on the upper or the uh, topmost part of the esophageal preparation they will move downward in a very short interval so of course acetylcholine will reduce the, the time taken by seeds to reach the other other end of the esophageal muscle preparation and because they increase the by acting on the m3 muscarinic receptor present on the ciliary or the epithelial surface of the esophagus uh, increase the ciliary processes movement due to which seeds will reach on the uh, very short time seeds will reach on the other end and what will happen when we pour the atropin that is a cholinergic antagonist that will increase the time suppose if acetylcholine may produce the reading of 26 what we can expect or as a presumably as an assumption atropin in the first reading might increase the time taken to at least up to or possibly 35 to 34 seconds for the seeds to uh, move or reach from one end of the esophageal muscle preparation to the other end of the esophageal muscle preparation okay we can test this experiments multiple times with several readings and then we calculate the mean or average of each reading and and in the end what we will write in the conclusion or result section we write that the cholinergic agonist reduced or shortened the time taken by seeds to reach the other end of the esophageal muscle preparation because it is a cholinergic m3 receptor agonist which increases which upon stimulation increases ciliary processes movement uh, full stop uh, the administration of cholinergic antagonist atropin increased remember increased the time taken by the time taken by the uh, seeds to reach the other end of the esophageal muscle preparation okay so this is now from this experiment students we have learned or checked or tested or i have given the demonstration of the effect of cholinergic or anti cholinergic drugs on this ciliary process movements using the fraud fraud esophageal muscle preparation i hope you have enjoyed this Uh, video and this experiment ex experimental demonstration and it is going to be very useful and interesting for you in future also thanks for listening and joining thank you